Today we will be talking about prostitutes pupil. Actually when a bright light suddenly enters into your eyes, your pupil constrict because it wants to block the excessive amount of light that enters into your eyes and damages the retina. Let me show you a video of that. Okay, look at this video carefully. Did you notice as soon as the light enters into the eyes, the pupil, the black area, this black portion constrict. Let me show that to you again. Yeah, did you notice it's getting smaller? right it gets smaller as soon as the bright light suddenly enters into the eyes but it was believed that a prostitute's pupil won't constrict and to understand why their pupil won't constrict we need to first understand why our pupil constrict when a bright light suddenly enters into our eyes this is a protective mechanism to prevent us from the excessive radiations of the light that may damage our eyes right so at first we need to understand how we see whenever the light rays enters into our eyes this stimulus is carried out by optic nerve this portion is the optic nerve the optic nerve from the nasal part of the retina it crosses to the other side whereas that from the temporal side does not cross you don't need to get too deep into this just understand that the optic nerve carries the stimulus and it synapses at this place called the lateral geniculate body or lateral geniculate nucleus but not all the fibers synapse at this lateral geniculate nucleus we'll, un we'll look at another picture again but this is a common visual pathway when light enters, it goes via optic nerve, sinus, uh, synapse at the lateral geniculate body and this sends signals to the visual cortex that is on the occipital lobe and our brain interprets the image that we see. This is how we normally see. But what happens when light suddenly enters into our eyes? This is what happens. When we suddenly sign a light into one of our eyes, both of our eye, both of the pupil constrict. But to understand why, this is the mechanism. So let's say we suddenly sign a light in left eye. This is the left eye. We suddenly sign a light, then the optic nerve carries the stimulus to the lateral geniculate body, right? Here we have the lateral geniculate body. But like I already said, not all the fibers go to the lateral geniculate body. Some of the fibers go to pretectal nucleus in the midbrain. The light was shown in the left eye. It goes to the pretectal nucleus of the left side, right? Left midbrain. And from the left pretectal nucleus, it sends fibers to the Edinger westphal nucleus both of left and the right side light was signed in the left eye signal is carried to the left pretectal nucleus and left pretectal nucleus sends fibers to the both left and right Edinger westphal nucleus right from the Edinger westphal nucleus the nerve fibers synapse at the ciliary ganglions the left side Edinger westphal nucleus sends the fibers to the left side ciliary ganglion and the right side uh, Edinger westphal nucleus sends fibers to the right side ciliary ganglion and from the ciliary ganglion another knob that is short ciliary knob arises and it supplies to the constrictor pupillary muscle. So it supplies to the constrictor pupillary muscle and when this muscle constrict your pupil constrict. So whenever you sign a light in the left eye let's say then by this mechanism the light carried through this pathway to the pretectal nucleus and then the Edinger westphal nucleus of both sides and to the ciliary ganglion of both sides and then by the short ciliary of both sides your pupillary constrict, constrictor pupillary of both sides constrict and the pupil become smaller it constrict right so this is how your pupil constrict the mechanism by which the pupil of the left eye constrict is called the direct pupillary right reflex and when signing the light on the left eye the constriction of the pupil on the right side that's called the consensual or the indirect light reflex but why does the pupil of a prostitute was believed that is does not constrict during the signing of the bright light. To understand that we need to first discuss about and the reflex. This was the pupillary light reflex. Let's first discuss about and the reflex which is accommodation reflex. In the accommodation what happens is that when you suddenly focus on a near object. Let's say you are looking at an object that is very far. Now when you are suddenly asked to focus on a near object then then at that point what happens in your eyes is called accommodation and in this process three things occur your lens become more curved curvature of your lens increases your eyes comes medially that means your left eye comes toward the right side and your right eye comes toward the left side they comes towards your nose medially right and the other thing that occurs is the constriction of the pupil this constriction of the pupil on the stimulation of light was absent in the prostitutes here when you accommodate constriction of pupil is present even in the prostitutes. Why? Let's discuss and to understand this we need to understand what happens during accommodation what's the difference between the constriction of the pupil in the light reflex and the constriction of the pupil in the accommodation reflex. When suddenly asked to focus on the near object the nerve again optic nerve carries the information to the lateral geniculate body right here we have the lateral geniculate body and lateral geniculate body sends the information to the 
visual cortex that is on the occipital lobe right so this is how we normally see but let's say we are focusing on some distant object when we are suddenly asked to focus on a near object then this visual cortex finds that image blurry when suddenly asked to focus on the near object from a distant view right so when this cannot interpret the image clearly the visual cortex then for the purpose of accommodation to make a sharp distinct image of that point what we are seeing this visual cortex sends signal to the frontal eye field right it sends signals to the frontal eye field and frontal eye field sends signals to the edinger westphal nucleus and the oculomotor nucleus here we have the this is the edinger westphal nucleus and this is the oculomotor nucleus which are in the midbrain here we have the pretectal nucleus this pretectal nucleus was involved in the light reflex right this nerve fiber came into the pretectal nucleus during the light reflex but here visual field sends signals to the frontal eye field and frontal eye field sends signals to the oculomotor nucleus and the edinger westphal nucleus but no nerve fiber are reaching the pretectal nucleus for the purpose of accommodation just like in the previous case edinger westphal nucleus sends nerve fiber to the ciliary ganglion right the right side edinger westphal nucleus sends nerve fiber to the right side ciliary ganglion and the left sided edinger westphal nucleus sends nerve fiber to the left sided ciliary ganglion and from the ciliary ganglion short ciliary nerve arises and it supplies the pupillary pupillary sphincter muscle or the constrictor pupillary muscle that helps in the constriction of the pupil and the another thing that happens during accommodation is this by this oculomotor nerve this oculomotor nerve supplies medial rectus muscle as well as the ciliary muscle medial rectus muscles helps in medial rotation or the convergence of your eye that's why while asking to focus on a near object quickly your medial rectus muscle act and bring both of your eyes medially that is toward the nose left eye towards the right and right eyes toward the left also because it acts on the ciliary muscle ciliary muscle constrict and when the ciliary muscle constrict the lens becomes more convex remember ciliary muscles are the muscles from where zonular ligaments arise and these ligaments attaches the lens helps to hold the lens in its position and when ciliary muscle constrict the zonular fibers that attaches the lens becomes relaxed and the lens becomes more convex and it can converge the image particularly on the retina so three things occur one is by the short ciliary nerve it supplies the pupillary sphincter muscle that helps in the constriction of the pupil and the other is via the oculomotor nerve that supplies the medial rectus and the ciliary muscle medial rectus helps to bring the muscle medially and the constriction of the ciliary muscle makes the curvature of the lens more curved right so these three things occur what happens during prostitutes case in the past when there was no treatment available for the syphilis the syphilis could progress to the late stages and in the late stages it can cause neurosyphilis it affects the part of the brain and why that constriction of the pupil does not occur in the prostitutes is not fully understood but it is believed that it affects the rostral part of the midbrain this part of the midbrain where we have the pretectal nucleus right so since the pretectal nucleus gets involved and affected so this light reflex where the pretectal nucleus is involved gets affected and is disturbed so the pupil cannot constrict when the light is signed but this pupil still have the accommodation reflex present because in the accommodation reflex pretectal nucleus is not involved only the edinger ostral nucleus and the oculomotor nucleus is involved so this is called prostitutes pupil where just like prostitutes they accommodate but do not react this was the theory behind why this kind of pupil is called prostitutes pupil but i like the other name of it which is called argyle robertson pupil in short arp that reminds me of accommodation reflex present but the light reflex is lost so this was the overall story i hope this was interesting